All right, everybody, welcome to my monthly segment on video games that time has forgotten. If you are new to the channel, welcome. If you are a subscriber, welcome back. This month, I'm going to be talking about the Fantasy Star series. Let's get started. In 1987, when millions of Nintendo console owners were playing games like The Legend of Zelda and Final Fantasy, the dozen or so Master System owners scattered across the country here were playing a very little unknown gem by the name of Fantasy Star was a game well ahead of its time. I'm talking way ahead. So ahead that while other RPGs of that time took place in times like the fantasy themed worlds we all are accustomed to, this one here was in the future. That's right, horses and other mythical creatures used for getting around? Pfft, forget that. This game has land rovers, it has ice diggers, hovercrafts, and even spaceships. Swords and knives? Get out of my face with that kitty stuff. Fantasy Star has futuristic weapons like swords and knives. Oh, okay. But does Final Fantasy have laser guns? Pew, pew. That's what I thought. Dragons and strange beasts? Pfft, please, get out of my face with that nerdy Dungeons and Dragons stuff. Fantasy Star has cool futuristic creatures such as... It, you, well, oh, hmm, well, okay. But is Final Fantasy in the future? You want to know how far ahead this game was? It was 1987 and already it had the pricing of a 2024 game. So while you were home playing that silly pff, what Mario game that babies play and paid $39.99 for, you were playing Fantasy Star that had costed you 70 bucks. And just in case you're wondering, that's $186 adjusted for inflation. You know, all joking aside, this game was a technological marvel and the greatest RPG to come out of the 1980s. I don't care what anybody says. Best RPG, bar none. It changed up the aesthetics, it went with an anime visual style when others were approaching it from a more mature angle and artwork to match. It placed you in charge of a female protagonist right up front, which looking at it now might not be a big deal, but in the 1980s when gaming was still fresh and unfortunately very male dominated and steered towards that market, that was a change of pace worth pointing out. Interplanetary travel, biodiverse themed worlds and monster styles to match each, exceptionally detailed backgrounds and face-to-face -face battles, fleshed out characters that were not based on classes but rather each had his or her own purpose for joining your journey in defeating Lassic. And on top of all that, you got a pseudo 3D style underground labyrinth that made you feel you were playing a game that should not have been possible on an 8-bit machine. Granted, $79.99 was a huge amount of money then as it is now, but once you got home and you played it, you felt that the price point was justified, especially when comparing it to other games of that genre. So when part 2 was announced for the Genesis, I was just blown away at the thoughts of what might be. I mean, if Altered Beast went from this right here to this, surely Fantasy Star would reshape the way that we- Oh. Oh. Um, hmm. Well, did I mention it's the first 6 megabit cartridge of its time? Ah? Uh, ah? Uh? The story elements, however, were very mature themed and it's one of the first games to tackle some really delicate matters, such as suicide as well as introducing major character deaths midway through your gameplay. Whoa, 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 wait a minute, what do you mean she dies? What do you mean she dies? I just spent 72 hours grinding to get her to max level so she can inflict major damage and spend tons of money on getting her geared up and you kill her? You kill- can, can I use the cloning station to bring her back? But you mean to tell me the same cloning station I have been using all this time to clone back fallen teammates suddenly doesn't work on her? It works on everybody else but not her? Can I at least get my gear back? M maybe- Oh fuck. Real game changer here. I'm gonna make a statement that will probably get me some real negative feedback. But I'm gonna say it anyway. I just have to. Fantasy Star 2 is extremely overrated for an RPG, even when just measuring it inside of its own franchise. Clunky menu mechanics, over tedious dungeons, character movements in the overworld is just unbearably slow. The music, while somewhat memorable, is very under par when you put it up against the likes of other games and what they were doing with the Genesis sound chip around that same time. It's like they were using half of the capabilities of the sound chip.
Then we got part 3 here in the US in 1991. Oh! Look, part 3. Yay. I'm just gonna come out and say it, part 3 is the dark horse of the franchise. And by dark horse, I mean it sucks. I'll be subtle here. The game was made by programmers and others who had no tie to the first two games and was rushed to the market with the gimmick of having you play through generations as its way of selling itself apart from what was becoming a somewhat crowded RPG market. The battle screens seem so odd. The music is nothing like what you would expect from a fantasy star game, but I will give it this. The main overall theme and intro music are great and possibly one of my favorite from the first four games. But you know what? Good thing about this title here is that Sega learned not to do all the stupid things that it did when they made part 4. If going out with a bang was Sega's plan for Fantasy Star, End of the Millennium hit the perfect note. First of all, it wasn't part 3. Had that been the slogan for the title by itself, it would have sold gangbusters. Graphics were a huge upgrade from the past two titles. Finally, and I mean finally, the Genesis graphical capabilities were being used on a Fantasy Star game appropriately. Wow, it just took six years. Better late than never. Second of all, it introduced the macro system, where you can set default actions to your party members for them to perform, helping out greatly when it came to grinding. Your party now extended to 4 characters, bringing up the party total, including yourself, to 5, so macro use, highly recommended here. The game also utilizes cutscenes much more than the previous titles to move the story along, giving it a more cinematic feel. The walking pace was greatly increased here, and you can actually toggle all that kind of stuff in the menu options the texting pacing as well. Overall, this was a great way to send off the Fantasy Star franchise on the aging Genesis as we got ready for all the possibilities the 32-bit era would bring to this amazing franchise. So when the Sega Saturn came out, we got nothing. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Nothing. Not even an offshoot of Fantasy Star. Unless you were in Japan. Maybe the next console would give us a new entry. The Dreamcast did just that. Fantasy Star Online ushered in the new age with online gameplay and brought the idea of online RPGs to console gamers, a genre that was still somewhat secluded to the still growing PC gaming market. You know, I could do a single video on Fantasy Star Online. It is considered by many to be one of the most revolutionary RPGs of all time. It brought online gameplay mechanics to the console masses, allowing for a massive amount of players to share their experience on the same server and working teams to complete quests on an uncharted planet named Ragol. You could choose from multiple classes and races and become part of guilds, adding to the online team-like atmosphere. But most importantly, it emphasized the importance of online gaming. But Fantasy Star Online was not tied to the original Fantasy Star storyline. Most of the team that worked on Part 4 were gone from Sega by the time the Dreamcast came out. So the art team felt that they had an open slate and did not have to adhere to the visual presentation of past titles. It was still in the future though. There were also remastered ports of Part 1 and 2 released on the PlayStation 2 only in Japan. Yay! Thanks to the fan community online, there was translations done for both of these games and you can actually download them on a website that I'm going to put the link for in the comments section. Really good ports, really good translations. Try them out, they're fun. And yet, we still have not had any new entry on the original Fantasy Star storyline. There has been no standalone title as of 2023. To think that such a groundbreaking title in the RPG genre has laid dormant for so long, it's just inconceivable. Especially when you consider that RPGs are now a mainstream genre among gamers and not that niche corner of the market that was targeted like it was only relegated to the uber Dungeon and Dragon nerds. No offense to anybody out there, I played Dungeons and Dragons myself. Middle Earth too. With so many odd titles being brought back to life with the likes of .emu and other indie companies dipping into old franchises, the chances of Sega lending out their IP to a company to bring back Fantasy Star? That's a possible option at this point. Better yet, this past gaming awards, when Sega announced all new remastered works into their well-known IPs, this list showed up at the end of the promo. Notice here the words and more. 
Now, could we be looking at a new Fantasy Star standalone title? Or maybe like a really souped up, remastered versions of part one, two, and four? We'll skip three for now. Or are we setting ourselves up for a Nintendo-like disappointment? So what do you all think out there? Should Sega revisit the Fantasy Star franchise? Should they make a standalone title again? Or should they just keep going with the Fantasy Star Online series that they've been doing for what now? Over 20 years. Personally, I would love to see a brand new Fantasy Star title, a standalone title, after so many years. What do you all think? Share with us in the comments below. In the meantime, keep watching and keep gaming. Tired of playing baby games on baby consoles? Well, get ready for Fantasy Star. The greatest RPG to ever land on a home console that is not made for babies has arrived. Amazing mind-blowing graphics, a complex and intriguing quest so massive that it spans three interplanetary biodiverse worlds full of amazing monsters, creatures, and an overworld so large that you will need the help of vehicles that will traverse land, water, and even lava. Lava. Experience characters that will aid you and even join you on your quest to avenge the death of your brother. So while your little brother is lost in that boring looking maze in that drab looking Final Fantasy game on that baby console, don't go help him. Tell him to grow a pair and come play a game where the action takes place right in front of your face in the open world and real looking dungeons that will leave you breathless and have you buying tons of graph paper. Fantasy Star, the RPG that will redefine the genre for years to come, only on the Master System. Now you're playing with... What? Oh, I can't say that? Wait, what? Really? Wait, you want me to scream out Sega like a lunatic? I'm not doing that. No. No, that is the stupidest thing I've ever heard. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. You can't make me. You cannot make me. You can pay me more, but I'm not doing it.